well. That's awesome. Okay, so what we'll do is... It's up here. It's done, say, struct for... Um, be participants. Struct. Be participants. Now we're going to say string p bp name and int bp init. There we go, that was the problem. Uh, is that all we need to do with that? How do you... Okay, so it's... Aha. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Okay. So now, we can say that this is going to be a vector of B participants. Except I spelled participants wrong. B participants is undefined. Struct B, Battleproc B participants, error identifiers undefined. And that's why. Okay, so it was that. I was wondering if that was it. So, battle we'll use here, participants. And so what will happen now is that we'll just take everything and throw them into the vector, just hodgepodge in order or whatever, and then um, Alright, so push back. Um, so we're going to say It's not going to work, though. Um, maybe we'll just make a new class out of it. Screw it. Instead of a struct, make a class. Uh, I think there may be some class within class. <coughs> I wanted to take her to the park that we had our first date. It All 
Oh, that's true. Then we can just declare it below it. Like I did with the other ones. Duh. Damn. Okay, um... We'll copy it here, though. Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. First, we need this as well. So... Let's see. Public. <clears throat> Be participants. Name. And in it. Uh, get name. Get in it. All right, and this becomes a vector of B participants up here. Um, let me check really quick and make sure I don't need to do any more kind of special stuff with that. Uh, let's see, let's go over to station or planet. Either one will have what we're looking for. I think plan is the one that's open. You need to, I need to move the end diff down then. Okay. Just trying to find to do anything special with it. Um end diff, okay. <clears throat> so now what we'll do is as Baptist Pins push back new Or just say, um, be participants. This type name is not allowed. <clears throat> No instance of constructor be participants. Oh, we need to actually create that too, don't we? The constructor. Uh, be participants. String name int int. Um, BP name equals name. BP in it equals in it. What did I call it then? Oh, whoops, no typo. And then let's say, um, and zero. Okay. And that'll initialize the first element. Um, I mean, it seems like it's needed, but um, at least with Java, maybe not with C++, so with Java, if you don't have at least one element defined in a vector or an array, um, when you try to use that array, it's going to not allow you, or vector's not going to allow you to, because it will essentially be non-initialized, and you'll get an error message. Statings as such. <laughs> uh, string B participants get name return B P name int B participants get init. Uh, 
BP init. Okay. So, um, and then we'll add uh, the same thing as did last time with the uh, uh, other participants thing, sir. So, battle P par. Participants minus minus <coughs> and battle H participants minus minus. Okay, and then we'll say if uh, BP participants is greater than zero. B P or uh, battle participants dot at I I'll tell you why we're doing this in a second here. Equals P team I dot P ship dot Are we not dot pushback? And then uh, P team I dot B par <coughs> dot P ship dot get M in it. So what this will do is, is if battle participants or battle player participants is greater than zero, um, I should take that off of there. To uh, push back an element in the battle participants vector. Uh, of a class type of battle of uh, B participants uh, with the player name and then the player ship movement initiative as the uh, <clears throat> the uh, I don't think we'll need to use that actually I'm going to take that off of there so it doesn't make any sense to do that because we're, we're technically creating the elements here. This is also initializing the elements. Um, we'd only do that if we were going to initialize them all and then fill them in with equals, which we're not going to do this time. Uh, we're going to try and combine that into one function, or one uh, for loop here. Uh, and then that'll create the uh, element within this with that information. Now what we'll do is we'll increment i2 so that we increment the value no, we don't need to do that now, do we? We just use that. Um, so I, we'll switch that to I instead of I2. I'm going to take I2 out of here. Don't need that anymore. Um, okay. And say else 
F B par B H par is greater than zero. I will just copy this and change it a bit. H team H team dot H ship. And take that off of there. And we'll go battle player participants minus equals one. And we'll add this down below here. And what this will do is that every time that this uh, every time this is uh, used, uh, B par BP participants will be decreased by one until it's at zero. And then once it's reached zero, this will start calling. And uh, once this reaches zero, we'll have the uh, participants battle participants vector completely filled and uh, ready to go. So our next step is to then do the uh, bubble sorting. So this will be easier. So what we do is for i equals zero. Um, well, i is less than uh, battle participants dot size I minus minus oops four and the step what we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh Storage containers of battle of B participants. And the re the thing the reasoning behind this is that you store the the uh, element you know instance of the class within these storage containers, and then you can switch them back and forth as needed. Because when you save, uh, if we save one instance from the from the this uh, vector. It'll contain, you know, all the information that is part of that instance, and so you can even take that and, you know, throw it around different uh, classes if you needed to. For this instance, we're going to keep it all inside this class and just use this as storage. So we're just going to say, um, take out that capital S there, because it's no longer dealing with strings. So uh, for i2 equals zero. I2 is less than battle participants dot size I2 minus minus or sorry plus plus my mistake all right now what we do here is we say um, if B battle participants dot at I dot get in it is so that's so if the get in it of the current element is less than battle participants dot at i plus one which is the next element dot get in it and and I is less than, or I does not equal battle 
participants dot size and so what, let's go ahead and just discuss what this means here so um, this part we explained already if the current elements get uh, initiate initiative value is less than the next elements get initiative value then we're going to swap them, but we have to make sure that we don't try and um, access elements that are not there, and so that's why we have to have this one here. So this states if the if we're at the last element, so it should be a less than or equal to, rather. Or no, 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 we don't less than yeah. So if it if um, size minus one, obviously we gotta do that because it'll bring out you know, it'll say six, but it's actually gonna be zero to five or three when it should be zero to two. So it has to be minus one. So if I is so if this is true and only if i does not equal uh, is not at the if the loop is not at the final element, does it look through and uh, sort them? Now. If it isn't at the list element, then it continues through. And we're going to say, um, storage one equals battle participants dot at i storage two equals battle participants. dot at i plus one and then we say battle participants dot at i equals storage two and battle participants dot at i plus one equals storage one and so let's say, let's say swap elements store elements so essentially we are storing the current element in storage one and the next element in storage two and since the next element is has a higher initiative, it gets set to the current element, while the smaller initiative value uh, element get valued element gets set to the next one. And so it continues through this uh, the first time, and uh, finds the greatest one, and puts it as the other first one. So then on the next time through, it will take the first element, go through this again, and when it finds that there is no uh, greater element. Um, it will skip that and go to the next one, and then it'll find the second greatest element, and so on and so forth, so forth until all six are in the proper order. And that's how we'll order them. So now. That's all done there. That's all we have to do with that. So we need to now um, figure out how to translate this vector into use with the battle loop. So to determine the attack order, we have to call that function, uh, which was BA participants. Do we even need to send player through anymore?
No. Oops. I don't believe we need to. Alright. So now... Go back to battle loop. And copy in this uh, function call here. Now, so, we need to use this to somehow connect to the specific, uh, uh, element where the actual information is contained in. So, I guess we'll do a while loop first here. Oh, we already have done the while loop there for the end. Um, so... What we need to figure out then is so if well let's see. First we need to God this is really annoying. Okay, so we need to create a way in which like I said we connect the participants vector into the actual arrays and use that to uh, conduct the battle. So we need to first add in some code to uh, go through each element. So it's going to have to be a for loop, I would say. Um, execute uh, battle or execute attack order. So for i equals zero, i is less than battle participants dot size i plus plus. All right. Okay, now we're going to have <coughs> uh, some new variables to add. First, we're going to have one called um, current attacker. And that's going to be an int. So int current attacker. Uh, we'll have a string called um, find current attacker. And then string, or how about a bool? Bool current see bool is ca hostile so what's going to happen is that we'll use the find c attacker to uh, locate the elements in which um, 
the current attacker from the B uh, B participant specter is located. Um, we're gonna need to add back in that uh, hostile thing. So, um, for battle loop, uh, bool is hostile. This is essentially, I think, what is known as a virtual function, maybe? Or maybe not. I don't know. Um, but it's going to be, the whole thing's going to be defined within the player header so that we don't have to create a CPP thing for it. Um, return false. Just because it's not really worth putting it over in there. And do the same thing over here for battle loop. Bull B is hostile. Return true. Uh, did I do B is hostile? Okay, now we do B for bull is hostile. Uh, first of all, we're going to say um, find C attacker equals um, B participants dot at I dot get name. Okay, now Alright, so now we have the name. Now we need to connect the name to the uh, specific element. So now we have to do a, uh, another for loop. For i2 equals 0. i2 or we'll just uh, not do that one, so I2++. We'll just break out of it ourselves. So what I want to say now is this P team, or uh, if P team uh, I2 dot get name equals equals uh f c attacker else if h team i2 dot get name equals f c attacker so uh now i want to say uh, current attacker, which is an int. So, let's say C attacker equals I2, and that is hostile. B is hostile equals Um, actually, we only need to do it in the hostile class. If it's going to be player, which we're going to know if it's player or not, we'll leave it here just for me for future reference or future use. But if it's going to be host, if it's going to be um, from player, we're just going to say false here. But with the attacker, there could be a ship that is not hostile, <coughs> and that's what we need to look out for.
Really? How's that? Oh, sea attacker. This CA hostile. So, uh, C attacker equals <clears throat> I2, and B is C A hostile equals uh, H team I2 dot uh, is all right. So, now how do we conduct from here? That's the question. Before, the way it worked was that we went through the while loop <coughs> and we did the, uh, you know, the whole <coughs> if statement to see if the player or hostile could go first, and we had two different executions based on that. But now, what we have is a four, we have a vector that already has who can go first or the order of the battle already in place. And so that's not necessary, but what's necessary is to figure out a way to go through the battle process um, via that uh, vector as such through a for loop like this. And there's also the fact of that um, <coughs> one of the uh, people in the battle is going to be the player, and the player has different uh, execution stuff than the AI does. Um, and so we have to be able to detect if the player is the one that's up for their attack, turn to attack or not. Um, so we have this, and then we go through it. And we find the current attacker, and we save the information. So what I think we do now is we continue through the for loop, and the for loop will become um, the next. Uh, hmm. There's got to be an easier, simpler way, though. I mean, if we do it this way, we might as well just make this the battle loop itself, instead of just having a while loop. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way to use the while loop itself to do this without using for loops. But the problem is, is that... Um, well, there's this stuff that has to be undertaken, that's true. And then as each each time we go through here, so um, damn, we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to have to have to do it like this. It'll have to be done like this, but we'll have to figure out uh, how to minimize the amount of code we're gonna need. Um, so so with this we find the attacker, and then from there we go on to do the other stuff. <laughs> so or we need to put breaks in here. So we actually break out of these, this for loop if we find him. Alright, so now we need to say, we need to do a few things here. First is we need to make sure that the, if the attacker, current attacker is the player, that we call the player stuff that we need to. Uh, 
so what we need to do is then say um, if C so if P team <coughs> C attacker <coughs> dot get name equals equals m player dot get name so in other words if the current attacker is the player undertake this execution block okay so next we say if So that's the major thing there. Now, whether or not it's hostile is a good question. I think that that it will be a requirement. So uh, the next one should be an else if, because we don't want to say if it is and then go on to the next one and say else if. So if the, if the player is not the current attacker, then do this. Else if. Um, B is C A hostile. I'm gonna take the that execution block. And we don't have to check for initiative or anything because at this point in time the initiative has already been decided. And then say else this will be for um we'll say is not hostile. And then else which will be uh for the hostiles proper. So if current attacker is the player, if the current attacker is a player wingman, if the current attacker is hostile. Alright, so now we need to undertake the next step, which is to determine how things are going to happen here. So, um, let's start just with the player one for tonight and then tomorrow we'll go into these other two. The other two are going to be way more complex because essentially we have to create an AI for each of these in determining how they're going to fight and so on and so forth. Um, for the player though it's a lot easier because you're inputting the commands of what to do. The, com the you know, game doesn't have to calculate out the stuff itself. Um, but for the player uh, we have to do Uh, the player menu. So we have to call the, the battle menu and then from there do a switch. Uh, like we did with these here. So, uh, let's see. Battle loop, non action, choice, hail, weapon info. Um, so, let's see. Display battle action menu one return user choice. Uh, so B menu one A. Let's look up what's in that menu. B menu one A down here somewhere. I guess it's up above here. Never mind. B menu 1A. That's S station menus, station menu, B status, battle status, PP, message, R message. What the hell? We don't have the ma Oh, here we go. Uh, 1A. So, hail, open the fire, enemy, armament information. Alright, so. First, though, we need to 
actually ask the player which enemy to target, since we're doing it with a targeted approach where there's always going to be the enemy team uh, being you know used. This previously um, assumed only one enemy was going to be fighting. You're going to be only be fighting one enemy. These menus here. So we need to add a new one. So this is going to be one A or one B, and this will become one C. But what is one C for? Let's go back over here. Show hostile battle status. Display. Oh, that was for the team, I see. Gotcha. So yeah, B uh, B was for originally for uh, fighting a team of enemies. So what we need to do now then is ask the player to choose a target. So that'll be the first thing to do, and then we'll implement something similar to this what we have here for the second one. Except we'll be changing it around to be only that. Um, so see so, you now, get player to pick a target. So uh, we'll call a function called get p target, and it's going to return an int, which we'll say current target c target. And uh, B is CT hostile will equal true. So C attacker, C target. Find current target and B is CT hostile. Okay, and then we'll also add that in here, that uh, thing up here. Int get uh, does it say current target or player target? Get P target, okay. Get P target. Yeah, we're going to have to do it this way um, for the player. For the other two, we'll create a singular function that'll have a uh, bool for a switch to determine which uh, execution path to take for uh, either wingman or for hostile. Uh, enemy turns. But uh, go with this for now. Get player to choose targets. So the proper way to do this would be to then display in P target the battle status of each other's and then have the player choose. I'll have them show this to them, then the the hostiles will be shown within this other function. And uh, the player will be able to choose which hostile to attack based on the statistics that they see. So int uh get P targets um,
So, uh, how would this work, though? We just display a message. I guess we'll, what we'll do is we'll do this. I will add a message. To this. A new message. Um, please pick a target. Six, and then from here we'll say uh, mp dot uh, mr message uh, twenty six, and then we'll use this. Equals. We'll say uh, p choice equals this. And then we'll edit that uh, particular function. Um, but I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll, start, we'll finish this off tomorrow. It's getting kind of late, and I think my hard drive's getting full. Plus, I need to, I've, I've been forgetting to go through and actually put in all the changes I've been making in the change log, so I'll need to do that right now, too. So. Um, yeah, we'll get to that tomorrow, uh, but thanks for watching, uh, these videos. Hope you found them, uh, educational. Um, I'm not sure how long these, this whole developer's vlog idea of mine is going to be going on for, for this one. Um, probably for quite a few more parts. Uh, but thanks for watching them, and, uh, feel free to, uh, vote them up and to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next time.